Hey guys, welcome to Carbide Office Hours episode 9. I figured I'd change things up today just because being in front of a computer, uh, it just it doesn't give you the same experience and ability to talk about different things like work holding, which is today's topic. Uh, so I figured being in front of my CNC makes a lot makes it a lot easier to uh, describe what I'm talking about. So let's go over a couple different ways you can attach different materials to your CNC's bed. Um, so first up on the agenda is adhesive work holding, which is something I use a lot. Um, it, it's kind of a crutch for me, or I'm just lazy. Um, but you can get a bunch of different um, styles of double-sided tape. Um, these are three that I like. Um, there, you could also use like carpet tape or VHB foam tape. But I find that these uh, have maybe too strong of a bond and it can be really, really super annoying to try and pry pieces off your table if you use these. So stick with something that's, that's more like a, it acts like a double-sided uh, masking tape. Um, and you could also use masking tape in conjunction with cyanoacrylate glue, crazy glue, CA glue. Um, those are really useful. Uh, some pros and cons between these two. Um, masking tape is masking tape. Uh, you, you sort of know the bond strength you get here, uh, but it is much cheaper than these other tapes. So you could lay down a whole lot. You can get these in, in like three inch wide rolls and cover the entire surface of a part that you're trying to machine. Um, so you can, if you really want to, just saturate, cover the whole thing in tape and uh, use CA glue on top of that tape, put glue, uh, tape down on your table and stick those two together and it becomes sort of like poor man's double-sided tape. Um, but the uh, bond strength per square inch for some of these other tapes is a little higher, so, so sometimes you can get away with using less. Um, so it's, it's kind of a trade-off, depends on which one you prefer. Uh, the other thing to look out for with using uh, adhesive work holding, specifically double-sided tape, is that if you have material that isn't perfectly flat, like you can see here I've got a little bit of corner-to-corner -corner wobble, um, the tape is going to try and pull it down, but if the material is thick enough and strong enough, it's going to slowly pry itself off the table. So uh, keep that in mind, keep in mind how strong your tape is, keep in mind how thick and how strong your material is, and whether or not those two are going to be constantly fighting each other. Uh, so you'll have to pick and choose your work holding methods depending on these factors. Uh, foam tape might be able to account for some of these uh, unevenness in your stock, uh, but it should be sort of a last resort. Um, however, if you do have uh, unevenness like this, something like uh, hot glue could actually go around the seams and just lock in whatever saddle shape you have, bowing, cupping, whatever, and secure it. Um, and if you, I think it's isopropyl alcohol, a couple drops of it will help release the hot glue. Um, so that is another option. Or uh, this is more applicable to non-porous materials. So not wood, but uh, plastic or metals. This is used a lot in the jewelry world is uh, wax. So you can heat this up and then get a little puddle of molten wax going and then smush your material down in there That'll lock it in place, and uh, the added benefit is if you have a thin piece of metal, when you cut through it, normally when the cutter touches this, it pulls up some of the adhesive residue and it, it gums up the cutter. Um, wax won't do that, uh, neither will hot glue, because those aren't tacky once they're cool. So this is another good option if you're trying to uh, work hold something either really thin where you need support on the bottom. Uh, so like if you had sheet metal, you really wouldn't want to maybe just clamp it around the corners because then the middle is going to start vibrating as you cut it. Um, so hot glue, wax, uh, really good for providing non-tacky uh, contact and adhesion everywhere along the bottom of a uh, piece of material. All right, let's see. Oh, one more word of caution with any sort of uh, heat activated glue or wax is that if you're cutting something and you get your speeds and feeds wrong and you start building up heat, you're going to start to weaken that bond. So if, if this starts getting really hot to the touch, you can bet that whatever adhesive you're using on the bottom is also going to start to weaken as well. 
So keep an eye on your speeds and feeds. Make, make sure you're taking a good chip load. Um, watch the last Carbide Office Hours episode about uh, feeds and speeds. And uh, yeah, keep that in mind because this stuff will weaken with temperature. Uh, let's see, what's next? All right, let's get this out of the way. Next option for work holding is using screws or nails or bolts. So if you have a piece of wood um, and you just drive a hole into it, into the wasteboard, drive a couple of them, that'll lock that piece down really well. Uh, the biggest thing is you've got to make sure that whatever you're cutting out of this doesn't nail, um, not pun, uh, one of your, uh, your hardware fasteners. So um, usually if I'm going to do this method, I will clamp down my workpiece and then bore out the holes that I'm going to uh, use for my hardware and then drive bolts or screws through there and then machine the other features in my workpiece. And so by modeling both those hole locations and the, the feature of interest in your uh, CAD setup, you know exactly where everything's going to be and it's not going to crash. If you don't have that luxury or you're lazy, there are also composite nails or plastic screws that you might be able to use. And then it, it really doesn't matter if your cutter just crashes through one of those because that plastic or composite will yield um, instead of potentially if it's a steel fastener chipping your flutes. Um, so that is one way to do it. The other thing that I've done before, which um, is really good for small pieces, is, so for example, with this um, stainless steel, almost sort of like model train wheel that I made, what I did was that middle hole uh, was my, my mounting, uh, uh, that was the origin for this piece. So what I did was I moved my CNC over one of my bolt holes in my threaded table, uh, set that as my origin, lifted it up a little bit, and then lined up my stock material, which was just square, over that same hole, clamped it down, bored out the hole, which left me with this, and then used a fastener to lock that in. Um, and then once I had that secured, I knew that uh, I shouldn't touch anything inside this diameter, but everything outside of it uh, was fair game. So that is how I located and secured a little piece like this, and that gave me complete access everywhere else around this. Didn't have to worry about, because this is uh, stainless steel, any heat building up that would weaken adhesives uh, or uh, gumming up of the cutter, which would basically glue chips into my flutes and turn it into a sort of a basic drum sander, which was not good for uh, clean machining. So uh, bolts, screws, uh, any sort of hard fasteners, uh, they make really solid work holding choices. You just need to plan around them and make sure you don't crash into them. Um, oh, and if you're, you're like, if you screw down this board and you're cutting something out of the middle, you'll probably still need tabs, so just keep that in mind. All right, uh, moving on. Um, since I mentioned it before, I started with the piece like this. I had clamps around it. So uh, any sort of top clamps that you might use that come down on top of the material. Uh, these are our gator tooth clamps. Um, you can also use something super fancy and cheap. Like it, you can make one of these yourself by just drawing two rectangles and cutting them out. This is just some uh, quarter inch plywood that I laminated together. Um, but any sort of clamps that go on top of your material, hold it down uh, so that there's a friction interface between your part to keep it from moving around. That is probably the easiest and most popular way of work holding. Um, you just need to make sure you have threaded inserts or T-tracks that you can use to uh, bolt down your clamps. Um, so that is uh, super common and it's it really doesn't take a lot to get into. Uh, I think th these were one of my first projects. Um, so it, they're, they're sh the barrier to entry for this is super low and you should always have a couple of these on hand. Uh, these also make great stops. So um, if you're uh, trying to do a repeatable fixture, you could use some of these, um, just set them up and then align your piece to that and then clamp to it. Or you can use side clamps like our 
fancy tiger claws to push the piece into these hard stops. Uh, now you might see that in my table I also have a corner square setup. This is another thing that um, Carbo 3D sells um, and it's in the store. So if you want to take a look, I think it's $20, but you could also use something like this to repeatedly fixture or locate stock. So you can just line it up and uh, this gives you a really quick reference of uh, whether or not you are parallel to the x-axis. So I've got a little file that I'll release which basically just pockets this down about half a millimeter so you can uh, quickly locate uh, the corner square. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. So with a corner square that you install yourself, uh, the biggest thing is to make sure that each of these legs is parallel to your axes. And the easiest way that I found to do that was to mill a really shallow pocket so that your corner square was locked into that orientation. So if you need to remove it, if you need to face your wasteboard, it's really easy to put this right back to where it belongs and make sure it's aligned with your axes. So once you have that there, you can just load up a piece of stock. Um, if you inset this a little bit more so it's inside the first set of holes you have, you can use top clamps across it, um, or you can use side clamps or cam clamps to hold your workpiece into this corner. Um, one thing to note that our corner square also has a little cutout so that it fits a uh, touch probe. So if you have thin stock where uh, you might, uh, this might get in the way, we have a little cutout here so you can find the bottom left corner. So that's where you might use one of these and we also have an extension bracket so that you can find a straight edge along a longer distance. Now let me just throw this back in before I forget about it. Well, I won't forget about it, but it'll just annoy me if this is constantly undone. All right, so that is clamping in a nutshell with some other permutations. Um, another really useful method, which I don't see a lot done on the Shape Oko, but is done a lot on the Nomad, is to use something like a vise. Um, so one of these, don't mind the mismatched hardware. I stole this uh, from the scrap heap, um, is a vise. So you lock down two sides, you've got two moving jaws that will clamp down on, well, one moving draw, one fixed draw, that'll clamp down on whatever stock you have. And this bolts down to your table, and it stays there, it's fixed, it's rigid, so you can take a uh, piece of material, stick it in there, maybe have a hard stop somewhere so that you can uh, index it in the same place. And for uh, repeat jobs, having something fixed to your bed where you just drop a piece of material in, lock it down, makes it really quick and easy to, to batch out parts. Um, and it's nice and rigid, it's secure, and you know everything's level. Um, the only thing you got to keep in mind is that if you install it crooked, which there's a little bit of slop in these holes, as all bolt holes have, uh, you want to make sure that this is as parallel as possible to your machine axes. So if you just clamp an indicator to your gantry and you just sweep it across one of these faces, you can sort of just uh, tap it with a hammer or something and just knock it straight. Um, so super useful. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is that with a vise, uh, you have limited access to the sides of your part. Uh, so a lot of times you'll have uh, parallels or just some sort of spacer to elevate your material so you get more side access. And uh, in, in a machinist environment, you'd probably flip it over once you have that done and then just machine away the bottom extra material. Uh, so vices, super handy, highly recommend, but you have to keep in mind of where it restricts your access to the part. Um, and then beyond this, um, if you had like maybe a round part or something that was difficult to hold, you could uh, tape MDF or plastic or something or, or screw them into the jaws and then machine out a circular pocket so that you have a clamping face that conforms to your workpiece. Uh, so those would be soft jaws. 
So that's that's one permutation you can make uh, with uh, a vice, um, or you could make a custom fixture. So uh, this is a vacuum fixture that I made for uh, a commissioned project. Basically, I had a, uh, a wooden hemisphere that I needed to hold down while I machined the outer contours. So I have uh, just basically an HDPE plate uh, with some with a pocket in the middle and a piece of MDF that I bolt on top with a hole drilled into that uh, vacuum cavity. So um, air is drawn through that little hole until you get a vacuum underneath the dome. Uh, this would probably work better with an O-ring and if I sealed the edges, which I didn't because I was lazy, but um, a custom fixture like this or any bespoke work holding, um, if you're doing a very specific part or repeats, uh, can be super useful. So those are just some ways, but the, the most common ways that I've used to work hold uh, any piece. If you have any preferred methods of your own, you can drop them in the chat or in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Uh, but uh, that will uh, conclude our little discourse on work holding. So I hope you guys found this interesting, uh, learned a little something. Um, in case you're wondering, I have clamp holders. Uh, these files are on Cut Rocket if you're so interested for storing your clamps. Um, just organization is nice. Uh, but that aside, um, work holding is super important. You can't cut what you can't secure. And um, for a lot of people just starting out uh, with maybe no threaded wasteboard, they're wondering which direction to go. Um, before you can even cut a clamp, uh, you need to be able to hold it down. So you probably start, get a piece of plywood, get some tape, hold down that plywood, cut clamps, cut your threaded inserts, or your waste board, and then from there you can actually start to hold down real materials. Um, because all of these methods, uh, they have different strengths, different weaknesses, and I mean strengths in the most literal manner. So adhesive work holding, it's super convenient, but it's not as strong. So if you're, you've got a piece that you're holding with tape on one side, if your cutter is hitting it, uh, your material really hard, you're taking an aggressive cut, there is a chance of it ripping off. So you need to tailor your tool pads for the work holding you have. If I'm bolting a part down, I'm a lot less worried about it. So all things to keep in mind, but uh, hope these tips help you out. Uh, good luck, have fun machining, and uh, stay safe, guys. Until next time.